is not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. Hello everyone, my name is Tyrone Lowe, host, producer, owner of T-Lowe Video Productions. My guest is somebody that's been around for a very long time. He was with the group Black Ivory, as I might, I might say, he still is. I want to welcome to the house of the legends, Russell Patterson. What's up, Russ? Hey, What's going on, how man? are you? How's it going, man? Everything's going well, thank you. Okay. As, uh, you were here not too long ago with Black yeah, Ivory. Yeah, me and, me and the guys Bro. came and you... Yeah. you you did a great show on us. Great, I, you know, and uh, just to top it off before we really get into you, man, um, I got a good response for that show. Yeah. And uh, everybody's actually talking about doing a part two because you guys been around for like forever, you know. Yeah, and, you can't um, fit in half an hour. With you know what I'm saying? And if I could that day, I really would have, you yeah, know. Yeah. So let's talk about you, Russ. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about the beginning because you started singing at really, uh, uh, very early as a teenager. Uh, yeah, I, I decided I wanted to be a singer when I was like 14 years old, mm -hmm. and I was blessed to meet the guys when I was 16. Okay. And as soon as I got with them, we got a record deal like within six months. So okay. it's been a very interesting, blessing, crazy ride, and now I have two brothers that from different mothers. <laughs> okay. And, yeah, and, I, and I see the bondage. For 50 years. <laughs> I see the bondage. And congratulations for the 50-year celebration. Yeah, thank I was you. unable to make it, but, you know, I was there in spirit, you know. Oh, so. wow. <laughs> I so, felt it. <laughs> you know, um, Black Ivy's, uh, like I said, played a very important part in my life. It was a story that was told. I think I said it on my last show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was like 15 years old when Spinning Around came out, and it became yeah. a part of my story. Yeah. But uh, let's get into you. Um, since you've been here, what have you been doing? Since I came to the last show? You're right. Um, well, we've done a few shows, actually. The group, uh, we, Leroy has been doing um, shows in Europe. So we were invited to accept an award, a, a Lifetime Achievement Award from mm -hmm. a magazine called Soul Survivor Magazine. Mm -hmm. And we went to London in October, and we got to perform with Leroy at the legendary Jazz Cafe. Okay. Yeah, so... That was one thing, and we had, we got to go to Florida a few weeks ago, and okay. we'd never performed in Florida before. Wow. That's so it was kind of cool, and the fact that, you know, to be walking around in T-shirts and shorts in December right, that's was kind of cool, new right? for me, too, yeah. <laughs> you know, from, from the days that you was actually recording to mm -hmm. now, what's the difference? As, as far, far as, as the recording? Music, yeah. Um, well, recording is definitely different, because before you had to go to a recording studio, Whereas uh, now a lot of people have studios in their homes, and right. I personally go to recording studios still. But okay, and the music. I mean, I mean, because back in those days, the music was a little bit more manual to, compared yes. to the technical stage right. now. You use musicians more so, like full bands. Yeah. Um, now it's more computerized, and one person might make a whole track. Which is great, too. I mean, if, if the music is good, it's good. Like somebody said, if, if you have a song that's really good, it could be a hit no matter right. what. But um, as far as the changing sounds of music, um, I think, you know, generationally, everybody has had a different... Because I remember when I was a kid, mm -hmm. my father used to listen to a station, radio station that played basically like Count Basie, Frank Sinatra, you know, but that wasn't my type of music. Right. And... Our music really wasn't put down as much as some of the music out today, but it was definitely different from what came before us. So, you know, this generation's music, they seem to like. And I like some of it, too. Okay. Uh, music today, to me, is like, uh, it's different from the olden days. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I was listening to music uh, when you guys were recording back in those days, man. Right. It was more milder. 
you know, to yeah, me, yeah. had a little bit more well, it depends. smoother. Yeah, our sense. type of music was smooth. And like I said earlier, I mean, y'all got a lot of ladies pregnant back in them days, man, with the music, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, well, love. I didn't get any. <laughs> I, you didn't get any? <laughs> so, <laughs> now I'm only playing. Yes, sir. <laughs> you um, know. Um, but it depends. Like, funk came out. Funk was definitely, right. you know, up hyper music. And, yeah. And sexy music depends on who put it out. Yeah, um, you know, as far as you recording at an early age, who actually influenced you to actually sing? Um, well, there were different people at the time. Like Gladys Knight was a, was an idol of mine back mm -hmm. then. Marvin Gaye, uh, Al Green, you know, the different people that that made me think that I could do what you know I've been able to do these years. Okay. Yeah. As far as being an artist right now, um, if you had to take it five years from now to go ahead, where mm -hmm. would you actually want to be at? I'd want to be in the Palladium, Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I hear you. Touring Europe. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, for me, it's, I don't know what the future holds, but it's just something I like doing. I've always liked making music. And at one point, I kind of got dis discouraged and I stopped. And then when I started doing it again, I realized, you know, if I never get another hit record again, at least I know that what I'm doing is something I enjoy doing. Well, you, and that's what everybody hopefully, well, yeah. you know, comes to the conclusion. You have a lot life. to look back on through the years. Yeah, that's true. You know, um, as, as far as a perf uh, performer and an artist, man, you guys came a long way and it's still originality, you know. Well, hopefully everybody's, whatever they come to mm -hmm. to be is original. Right. You know, because you don't want to be someone else because whoever you're trying to be probably did it the best. Okay. So you have to come up with your own thing. So now let's talk about your new track, uh, mm -hmm. Frankie Estevez. You know, uh, let's talk about the track. How did you all actually encounter it? And, um, and, and say the name of it so everybody, your viewers are actually know uh, the, name the name of, of the it track. is um, Sign of the Times. Mm -hmm. And it's a song that Leroy Burgess, um, the other member in Black Ivory, and mm -hmm. I wrote together. And we, he gave me a track, and we were sitting in his house one day and looking at um, television and the news reports. Mm -hmm. And we were like, wow, this is really, you know, our times are really crazy. Mm -hmm. So when he gave me the track, I went home and I started thinking of different scenarios that were happening on the news or in people's lives at the time. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, let me just put that into a song. And um, once I took it back to him, he loved it. And we had some things we had to change because the beginning of the song, he had all of these little snippets about okay. Mr. Trump and his wall oh, wow. and, and all kinds of stuff. And then I said, well, that might be a little L alienating. A little bit too uh, political. Yeah so, yeah, so we took those things out. And um, Frankie and I got the track and we started honing it and changing to like drum patterns and stuff like that. And at this time, I really wanted to put out, have a full CD that's almost ready. Mm -hmm. I wanted to put the CD out before Christmas, but... Right. Um, there were some other tweaks I need to do, so I decided, you know, let me put this single out mm -hmm. and see, you know, what it does. And um, because right now it's like a single season. Right. You know, you put out albums, it's okay, but everybody's dropping, like, right. singles right yeah. now. So I said, let me put this out and see what happens, and it seems to be doing okay. So are you, are you guys thinking about doing, like, a, a, a full music video on it or something like that? Oh, there's a, there's a well, there's a video. There's mm -hmm. not a video with me personally in it. The video that Frankie and I created is, since the song is called Sign of the Times, and there's been a lot of protests and all kinds of things happening out there, I, I wanted to make the video show signs that people are showing when they go to protest. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you I've, see I've, the video. I've, yeah, I've listened to uh, the beginning of the track. It has that M2 May feel. That, yeah, you know, that it's funny. juicy fruit type it's of... It's uh, funny, though, because, you know, Frankie did that. Okay. And I didn't catch on. I just thought the beat was kind of cool. Yeah. And then, but it did have, like, a familiarity to yeah, it. Yeah, it had that M2-man type um, of... Uh, somebody, as soon as I played it for somebody, said, oh, that's juicy fruit. Yeah, and you I'm know. And I'm like, oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> it's cool. Um, I'm also working on a track for, uh, for Russell right now. Um, I call it No Frills because we don't have a name for it. But it's going to be a banger, something a little different, you know, and um, hopefully when I put it out, you guys listen, you know. Um, Y'all are listening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's such a pleasure to have you here, man. Uh, well, we talk on you. the phone periodically and, yeah. uh, 
you know, we're going to get together and we're going to do this oh, and yeah. uh, make, make it happen for make 2020. Make music, make videos, hey. Hey, yeah, you know. Um, so what are your plans for, you know, do you have any plans for, you know, performing anywhere right now or are you guys doing anything um, that the viewers should know about? Well, the group doesn't have anything lined up just yet. We just, you know, we had a nice year for our 50th year. Oh, yeah. And um, we're going to just relax for a month or two and maybe we'll start working again around Valentine's Day. I think you all should, really. I mean, really. Why waste it? I mean, after 50 years, go for what? 75, man. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> you know? I'll go for 75. You know? Uh, but we're all doing our own thing, which I think is really positive yeah. because Leroy does his, you know, he does music with different people. Right. He does music on his own. Um, and Stuart does performances by himself. So I, I like the fact that we're all Integrated still a group, the, 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 but we're yeah, doing right. our individual thing. So. You know, um, it, it's funny, man, because I've never really seen Stuart perform by himself. No, he does a few things. There's really? A, he does a Motown review. Oh, really? Yeah, where he plays Smokey Robinson. Oh, get out of here. Because yeah, you know he's, he's an actor also. Okay. Yeah, he did a few TV shows back in the day. And uh, speaking of movies, you was actually working on something that you was acting or you were well, some I type do, of Well, I do um, extra work. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't gotten the speaking role yet. But, okay, I'm sure you, know, you will one day. But just being around the environment <laughs> is kind of helping. So. Right, you know. Um, so let me ask you a question, man. Um, mm -hmm. Due to the fact that you're doing all these other things, you know, as far as stand-ins and mm -hmm. the music and things of that nature. Do you have any other skills, you know, that, uh, that you, well, you know, I, as far as passions, things of that nature? I'm a painter. Oh, paint? Yeah, I'm, I do, um, well, not portraits, but I do artwork and I take photography. Oh, really? And, yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool, man. Yeah, I have a few outlets for my craziness. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a skill. You know, I mean, really. Well, I wouldn't say it's a skill, but it's definitely a passion. Okay. So. All right. You um. You saw me out there taking pictures of. Yeah, the sky I seen that. It was when, very. When was that was you. very epic, man. Yeah. I was wondering about. I was like, what is he doing, man? You know, <laughs> and things of that nature. Uh, I, like I said before, I'm gonna talk to Frankie about doing the house remix on your oh, song. No. Oh, Oh, great. Okay. I think that uh, it could be something that could be phenomenal. As yeah. far as different genres of music, yeah, because um, I, I think that's how music is really selling these days. If you have different editions, especially outside of the United States, because here they they're very particular about the types of music. Yeah, but when you go outside of you know in Europe and Asia, they are open. You know, they like all different types, and they're more loyal to people that they like too. It seems like. As far as like Asia and and and, and the UK and stuff like mm -hmm. that, which you have performed. Mm -hmm. um, how did you like it? I mean, what's their response like? What's your feeling behind it? Well, it was really cool because um, I had gone over with Leroy like maybe 15 years ago. Right. And the response was, um, was very nice. Um, but since he's been doing these solo shows with, mm -hmm. with a band, because right. when I went with him before, he was doing the show with tracks. Now he's doing it with a full band, and the band, I mean, they sound just like the recording. Really? <laughs> this band is really good. So he, um, the response we got this time, I mean, they were like crazy. They were really? like, Leroy, Leroy. Out in the UK, right? Yes, yeah. yes, at the Soul Cafe. Yep. I know he did and, something. Go ahead. And it was a diverse crowd. It wasn't like just one, you know, one group of people. It was all different colors, races, ages. So that was a really good thing. That's a real thing because we don't really have it like that in the no, UK at not. all, in the United States at all. Right, yeah. You know, uh, I've, I've seen outlets like for house music like in the UK mm -hmm. and Japan. And yeah, they, they are very festivals. supportive. They are very supportive. Yes, yes. You know, we're, we're actually integrated here and I think that we should step up, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and do something more phenomenal to really unify it you know, to the point where we're really supposed to be at. Right. Because it's a, it's a unique type of sound, and everybody's really starting to get into it now. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the generation that, that falls uh, after us pick it up too, because it's really lacking in yeah, a sense. Yeah, it is. It you is. know, um, I, I, that's why I have a new show that's coming out, which I hope actually will do something to at least, you know, start it off a little bit, right. and everybody can actually look at it for what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how do you feel about house music? Oh, I'm, I'm very much into house music. Really? I have, yeah, I, I um, released a 
a couple of house tracks from Black Ivory music. Okay. And, um, you know, my main line. He did the lead vocal on main line, y'all. <laughs> you know? <laughs> main I line got is, that um, main record. Main line is considered uh, a classic. And then there's other songs I've, I've released that... Uh, um, may not have been a hit here, but they're the different. They yeah, did, yeah did I, I remember but. Mainline um, when I first had got it um, from the record pool. Okay, and um, it was very, it was very uh, interesting because mm -hmm. Black Ivory, you know, and I was like, wow. Yeah. And then um, I played it, you know, different places I was playing at, mm -hmm. and um, it was it became really, really, really a good song. And it packed the floor. It was like one of those songs that when they hear it. Yeah, people. You know I mean, what I'm and saying? it's a blessing that that's still the case. But the interesting story about Mainline is okay. when it was released, it was around the same time. Remember the disco revolution they had where they were burning, burning records? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. It was released that. like that same week. Wow. So all of the radio stations that would normally have played the record, they weren't playing they that kind play? of music. Oh, they really? didn't play that kind of music anymore. So the fact that it took off in the clubs and has remained, you know, like a staple is amazing. It's a yeah. blessing. Definitely. And it's still a classic, man. It still packs the floor. Yeah. You know, um, I've heard various remixes of it. You know, I've heard some bootleg re you know, remixes of it. But yeah. uh, regardless what it is, it's really an original good song. Oh, thanks. You know, and hopefully you guys come out with something really banging again, really capture everybody, you know, yeah. and things of that nature. Uh, like I said, it's good to have you here, Russ, man. No, thank and, you. Um, thank you. You know, you guys go out and get this record. You know, uh, also... What's the um, name of it? What's the name of it? Yeah, what's the name I of it? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Sign of the Times. Sign time. of the Times, y'all. Yes. Signs of the Times. Pick it up. I'm bad when it comes to records, but if I can hear it, I'll remember it. Uh, <laughs> that's the way it is, you know, and stuff. Go out and support this guy, man. Uh, Russell's been around for a long time. He's still going to be around for a very long time. No, thank you. You know, and um, after the show, he's going to do a live performance on it, Sign of the Times. And um, I hope you guys enjoy it. And um, stay tuned for another Tilo Productions. And um, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Some people got no conversation While others are the daily news mm -hmm. Some people live their lives on Facebook Some pray to find their inner truth And there are those who feel entitled to all the riches that this great big world can give Then there's others out here struggling Struggling every day to live Yeah, I know they say people make the world go round But it's love we need right now Of the times right now, it's a sign of the times. Some people live on unemployment while others work each and every day, and the ones with the higher education. Still wanna win the lottery Some people wanna marry people Some feel same sex is still a little bit taboo I just wanna save my children, save my children. And don't know what the hell I gotta do yeah. I know that different people make the world Around. But it's love we need right now It's a sign of the times Right now It's a sign of the times
know the times. We all go through different ups and downs, going round and round in circles. But if there's love and it's a guiding force, we can all come together, make it so much better.
Valedictorian Awards Reception at the National Landmark Valentine Varian House Museum of Bronx History. For award recipients, this achievement means leadership and accomplished goals. It means being a leader, a shining beacon, an example for all to follow. It means that I feel like I've achieved my highest expectations and highest goals inside of high school and I was able to come on top of everyone and be number one in my class and represent my class as a whole. The Bronx Historical Society is in its 56th year of honoring valedictorians in the borough for their achievements. We're very big on education. That's what we do. We, we continue to educate everyone in the Bronx. Uh, we have a lot of valuable information, a lot of resources, and it's all for the next generation. So we have a very close connection with Bronx students. And Rachel, the valedictorian from Bronx High School of Science, who is on her way to Syracuse University, is taking this recognition with stride. It's, it's really like a really heady feeling, like, you know, I mean, just because, I mean, everybody at Bronx Science, obviously, it's, I mean, it's tough competition, so it's just, I don't know, it feels really great to have achieved so much. Bronx politicians came to show their support of these future doctors, educators, and politicians. Well, what we're doing today is we are celebrating what what is good about the Bronx. We're giving awards to young people who are great examples to all of us. They can show us what they've achieved and we can just uh, give them kind of a boost so that they continue to achieve and they can continue to make the Bronx proud and us proud. Most, it's uh, our opportunity to uh, really honor those who uh, really are very special. Uh, it takes a lot to be a valedictorian of your graduating class. So what we're doing here today is not only celebrating the Bronx Historical Society and the wonderful history attached to the Bronx, uh, but also the accomplishments of our uh, young Bronxites. It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. My assignment, my calling is to inspire, uplift. You have to make sure your people are partying. All I want to do is just bring joy to the dance floor and watch people dance. <laughs> Tino, 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 Tino. D, 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 D,